Now we're going to address the core of the body. <clears throat> we know through uh, exercises like Pilates, um, how important it is to address the core, to strengthen the core of the body. If you think about it, all those muscles support your posture, but they also support the spinal cord uh, because they help keep the bones in the spine in proper alignment. Now this is um, a slide that shows very, very common curvatures that you will find in neurological patients. Uh, it might be from neurological tone that has pulled them offline, but it can also be just weakened muscles that have allowed their body to compress. Um, you know, these patients typically lose inches off their height. And uh, we may see this as normal. Well, it does occur normally, but it is something we should be alarmed about because something is going on that needs to be addressed. They have bone that's deteriorating, uh, they have bone that's maybe offline, so as it curves, it allows them to shorten. You know, bone is a living thing. It's not like a pipe or a piece of metal. It is cells that are continually built and broken down, built and broken down. You have little cells called osteoclasts that go through and clean up older or dead uh, bone cells, then you have osteoblasts that come through and rebuild. This is the normal process, but one of the main things that keeps that symphony going, if you will, is uh, pressure. It's like weight bearing for your long bones in your legs. So a patient that just sits or lies down too much, they don't have those stressors that keeps the building going on. The osteoclasts tend to continue to break down, but the osteoblasts are not rebuilding. So it's very easy to see why these people end up with osteoporosis, uh, compression fractures, and of course, as those compression fractures allow the bone to weaken, then the weight of the upper body and head push down and uh, uh, their height can actually shorten. But with scoliosis, um, sometimes, especially if a patient is a little heavy and they have to be assisted into their chair, you know, from bed to chair, uh, if their hips get a little offline in that chair, it may not be noticeable. And you can get a curvature very quickly from that. So it's vital that we really look at these human beings when we help them get into a chair or if they're in bed, you know, nursing goes in and they do everything from the side of the bed. Uh, you uh, give people medicine, you start IVs, you take their vital signs. Um, whatever you're doing is from the side of the bed. So if we all take a moment before we leave that patient, step to the foot of the bed and look at them. Are they in good alignment? We want to try to get them as close to an anatomy picture we might see in a book as possible. So what do we need to do to enhance um, their body alignment? Something else, if you'll look at this scoliosis patient, do you see the pelvis is offline? It's actually tipped to the right, um, most likely, from their scoliosis, the curvature in the spine. Again, your body is always trying to compensate for what's going wrong, so as the body moves in one direction, the bones head this way, then you'll see the shoulders try to be righted and the pelvis will follow that deformity. Uh, you might even have uh, someone tell you that one leg is shorter than the other. And it isn't that uncommon uh, to want to put a lift on that leg that appears shorter. But if you think about that and they're this type of patient all you're doing is keeping that foot from coming down, from that pelvis from coming down, and trying to correct the spine. So what we want to do is correct, correct the curvature of the spine, allow that pelvis to come back down, maybe even with a small weight on that left side, if they tolerate it, to try to encourage the body gradually to come back where it should be. Uh, but we really don't want to put a lift um, on that left leg because 
if the legs have never been shorter all these years and all of a sudden they're short one shorter than the other then we probably want to think about maybe it's not the leg length it's something going on and you can actually if you can stand if these people can stand up you can kneel down um, behind them and actually feel their pelvis and see if it's straight or if it's tilted and that'll give you a real indi good indication of what you want to uh, what you want, need to do to begin their treatment. You can also run your hand down their back and feel if there's curvature of the spine. The middle one is kyphosis. Um, you also see an awfully lot of this in your long-term care patients and, and any restorative patient uh, that's not up and active. Um, they're starting to lose muscle tone because they're not exercising and, and creating good posture enough. Again, the weight of the upper body and head, once they start forward, it just keeps going and going. And unless we intervene, they can end up with their head in their lap. And you, you see that a lot. Um, and if you think about how hard it is to breathe, are they gonna stay oriented because they can't see their environment? Um, every part of the body, every system starts to break down. Um, when you have these conditions. For this, we want to start enhancing posture. And kyphosis is not just the what we think of with people who have severe osteoarthritis, uh, excuse me, osteoporosis, where they have the, the hump, if you will, on their shoulder, uh, their thoracic area. These are patients that it's simply posture. Um, lordosis, we don't see as much but it's definitely an issue. And for this also, we'd want to support, this is where the lumbar area is exaggerated, like toward the belly button, toward the navel. So you, again, you would want to compress the spine and um, hold in the abdominal contents and attempt to alleviate some of that severe curve. I love this slide <clears throat> because we always, tend to think, well not always, but we tend to think of patients what they complain of. Um, many of us listening to this today have had sciatic pain. Your lumbar spine are the ones that um, take the biggest brunt and the weight of the upper body and head on them. And they're typically the ones that uh, are pinched and we have that pain that severe nerve pain going down the back of the leg called sciatica. But do we think about where all these spinal nerves go and any problem with those bones in the spine are going to have an effect on that body part? These go to vital organs. You have heart, lungs, pancreas, liver, gallbladder, um, adrenal glands, um, all the body organs are affected. If you think about nerve conduction like the electricity in your home, without that electricity, nothing happens. Your spinal nerves are the same way. If you don't get good nerve conductivity to and from these organs and all your body parts, nothing happens. So you could have uh, patients who are actually very ill and probably on pharmaceutical products on, on taking drugs to combat the symptoms that if we could straighten their spine and enhance this nerve conduction to and from their organs you might see a lot healthier patient so it's very important to think about that and how and not consider bad posture just as something that happens when you get old but it is a problem and it's one that we can certainly address and address very efficiently. Uh, for Raymon is a term that means opening. So these show, this slide shows you those nice openings that should be there in the bones of your spine. And they're very important because those spinal nerves that come off the spinal cord come through there. You also have very vital blood vessels that come through there. The slide on the, <clears throat> excuse me, 
The slide on the right shows a normal disc and you see how that keeps the bones apart. You have a nice opening there, that foramen, very patent to where it should have no problem getting nerve conduction and blood flow through. Then you come down to degenerative disc. And that's starting to let the bone get closer to each other and you have all kinds of amazing nerves in those bones that when they rub on something hard like bone on bone, it is extremely painful. Then you have your bulging disc that's starting to impinge on that opening, on that foramen, uh, pinching the nerve. Then you have a herniated disc that may really have a drastic effect on the nerve and the blood vessels. You get down to the thinning disc, again, where you have bone on bone, and disc degeneration, and with the osteophyte formation, which would be a bone spur, and they can actually um, kind of catch on bone as you're moving and be very, very uncomfortable. This slide just shows a healthy versus a deteriorated vertebra. And if you look at the one on the right, um, I like that slide because it looks very angry and very, very painful, and these conditions are. And we need to be very cognizant that when our patient says they're in pain, they're in pain.